Abdominal x-rays are one of the most commonly performed first-line investigations in patients admitted to hospital with acute abdominal pain. Therefore, it's really important that we know when their use is appropriate and how to systematically analyse them. We'll start by looking at the indications. Whilst the majority of indications for abdo x-rays fall under the category of abdominal pain, there are some instances when we may want to perform an abdo x-ray in the total absence of any pain. The key indications we should be aware of include when there's a clinical suspicion of an intestinal obstruction, an acute exacerbation of inflammatory bowel disease, a palpable mass, constipation, patients who have acute pancreatitis, a small foreign body, trauma cases with blunt or penetrating injury to the abdomen, and also as part of a gastrographin study. This latter indication essentially involves the patient swallowing a water-soluble radiological contrast agent, which then continues to flow within the lumen of the GI tract. And after waiting a sufficient length of time for the contrast to be moved along the full length of the bowel, an abdominal x-ray is obtained to look for any potential pathology that may have impaired the contrast flow and suggest the need for further investigation. With regards to the pros and cons of abdominal x-rays, the main pros are that they are relatively inexpensive compared to other imaging modality such as CT and MRI. And also, they're readily available, which means they're extremely useful when investigating a patient in the acute setting. In terms of the cons, the obvious one is that we're exposing the patient to radiation. In fact, abdominal x-rays actually involve the use of approximately 50 times more radiation than compared to a chest x-ray. But on the flip side, they do involve a significantly lower radiation dose when compared to CT. However, as is the case with chest x-rays, we really shouldn't be doing abdominal x-rays just for the sake of it. And we should reserve their use for when we have a true indication. The other con of abdominal x-rays is that they only provide us with a two-dimensional image of what's inside the abdomen. Unlike CTs and MRIs, which can give us a 3D view. This means that there are limitations to what we can diagnose intra-abdominally with abdo x-rays, and therefore in some cases, we may be best opting for a CT or an MRI instead. When we perform abdominal x-rays, there are three views that we tend to use. They are the anterior-posterior view, or AP, the posterior-anterior view, or PA, and finally, the lateral decubitus view. By far and away the most common view we obtain is the AP view, and the PA and lateral views have become pretty rare, especially with the increased accessibility of more advanced imaging modalities like CT and MRI. But it's still important that you have a good understanding of each of the three techniques. The anteroposterior, or AP view, basically involves the patient lying flat on their back, on the x-ray table or a trolley, and the x-ray beams being fired from front to back. To get the best image, we need to ensure that the patient holds their breath as the image is taken, to prevent any blurring of the image that may be caused by movement. And also, we need to make sure that any radio-opaque items, such as belts with metal fastenings, are removed prior to the x-ray being performed, as otherwise, they may obscure any underlying structures and in turn reduce the quality of the end image. So it's not uncommon for a patient to be made to wear a gown whilst the x-ray image is taken. The posterior anterior or PA view involves, as I'm sure you can predict, x-ray beams being fired from the back of the patient through to the patient's front. And it's typically done with the patient standing upright with their abdomen facing the x-ray receptor, as you can see here. Now, unlike the AP view, which is used a lot, this view is rarely used in the acute setting, as typically, these patients can be quite unwell and have a significant amount of abdominal pain. So getting them to stand upright for the image is not exactly the most sensible or the kindest thing to do. The final abdominal x-ray view that we can perform is the lateral view, or the lateral decubitus, which basically means that the patient is lying down on their side as the image is taken. Now traditionally, 
the lateral decubitus view would be obtained to try and demonstrate the presence of any free abdominal air, which would indicate a gastrointestinal perforation. Therefore, most commonly the x-ray would be taken with the patient lying on their left side. This meant that any free air would rise, and thus would be more easily visible around the contrasting liver. Now, as you can expect, with the increased availability of CTs, the lateral decubitus view is now very rarely performed as an acute investigation. But it's still useful to know about it in case you ever come across one and have to interpret it. Before we start looking at the various anatomical structures that we can see on an abdo x-ray, it's important that we are aware that the reason we're actually able to identify any structures at all is due to their differing densities, and in turn, how these result in different levels of attenuation of the x-ray beams. Now, if you want to learn more on this subject, then make sure you check out our tutorial on how x-rays work. When reviewing an abdo x-ray, the general rule of thumb is to approach it in a systematic way. And we'll be covering this in the final two parts of this tutorial series. But for now, we're going to concentrate on what anatomy we can see. We can group the various anatomical structures based on whether they lie inside the abdominal cavity or outside of it. Starting with intra-abdominal organs. In a normal abdo x-ray, it can be quite difficult to visualize intra-abdominal organs. However, as you can see here, the stomach can usually be identified due to the presence of a gas bubble and the clear distinction between it and the fluid content within the stomach itself. Moving distantly on from the stomach, we have the small bowel, which we can find lying centrally in our abdominal x-ray. Similar to the case with the stomach, we may be able to see the small bowel because of the contrast between the luminal gas, the fluid, and the wall of the bowel. However, it's not uncommon that we're actually unable to see the small bowel because the bowel is collapsed. Continuing on distally along the GI tract, we get to the large bowel, which you can see here, lying in the peripheral aspect of the abdominal x-ray. More often than not, we should be able to identify the large bowel because of the presence of luminal gas or feces. As well as the GI tract, we can also see the slightly dense structure of the liver sitting within the right upper quadrant. And it's lying superior to the right kidney, which isn't always easy to visualize when looking at the abdominal x-ray. The right kidney tends to sit more inferiorly than on the left side due to the presence of the liver. Superior to the left kidney, we have the spleen, which may be obscured by various anatomical structures which lie anterior to it, including the splenic flexure of the colon and the ribs. Moving back to the kidneys, we have the ureters which come off the renal pelvis on the medial aspect of the kidneys. The ureters run inferiorly down to the urinary bladder, a longer course which roughly approximates with the lateral points of the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebrae. And it's along the course of this line that we look for the presence of any radio-opaque urinary tract stones in patients who have acute abdominal pain. And finally, lying within the pelvis, we have the urinary bladder, which we can see here. Moving on to extra-abdominal structures, these are essentially musculoskeletal structures, which include the thoracic vertebrae, the lumbar vertebrae, the sacrum, and the coccyx. We can also identify the lower ribs, the bones that make up the pelvis, so the ileum, the ischium, and the pubic bone, which isn't always easy to visualize when looking at the abdominal x-ray. And finally, you can see the hip joint, which is made up of the acetabulum and the femoral head. The main muscle that we can aim to identify in abdominal x-rays is the psoas major muscle, which is a posterior abdominal muscle, which extends from the lumbar vertebrae down to the lesser trochanter of the femur, and is responsible for flexion of the hip.